Black history is our history. This week, we're spotlighting the AME Church, how it started just down the road from us, right in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And to do this, uh, we're going to ask Reverend Dr. Alston Thomas from Allen AME, located in Oxford, Pennsylvania, to share about uh, the plight of the AME Church, along with uh, where they are currently and the vision that they have for the future. History of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, it is indeed a, a wonderful, um, very fruitful uh, story and history to tell. And it really uh, begins um, right here in Delaware, um, speaking from Newark, Delaware, uh, where uh, at the time uh, Negro Richard uh, was born to um, Benjamin uh, Chu. And Benjamin Chu uh, was a fifth generation uh, Quaker. Uh, he was an attorney for both the colony and the commonwealth of uh, what we know now as uh, Pennsylvania. Um, Negro Allen at the time was born um, on a plantation in the southern Delaware area called uh, Whitehall. And uh, Benjamin Chu saw the brilliance in Richard Allen. And so at the age of eight, he sold, um, at the time, Negro Richard and his family uh, to uh, Stokely Sturgis. Um, and Stokely Sturgis had sort of um, abolitionist uh, tendencies, if you will. Um, and uh, he, Richard Allen, uh, worked along with his uh, family on Sturgis's for farm for a while. However, um, Sturgis ran into some challenging financial times. And so uh, what he decided to do was to sell uh, Richard's mom and two of his siblings. A preacher by the name of Reverend Freeborn Garretson. Um, he started preaching, he was also a Methodist preacher, him along with some Baptist preachers after the American Revolutionary War, and they encouraged slaveholders to emancipate uh, their slaves. Well, Freeborn preached, uh, and Sturgis heard the preaching, he was convicted, and he decided to allow the slaves on his plantation to buy their freedom, which uh, Richard Allen did, and he changed his name from Negro Allen to Richard Allen. Um, that was about 1780. 1783, Richard Allen set out and he traveled throughout Delaware, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, and he proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in so doing, um, he caught the attention of the pastor of St. George's uh, Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, that was about 1786. And he, um, he gave Richard Allen the opportunity to preach the 5 a.m. worship service, which he did. And he preached, and the number of uh, blacks continued to increase at St. George's. And that made, quite honestly, the whites uncomfortable. Uh, it got to a point that one Sunday in 1787, uh, they were praying at the altar at St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church in Philadelphia. Um, and uh, one of the trustees, initials given H.M., went up to um, Richard Allen's uh, co-laborer, Absalom Jones, and he said to him, well, you can't pray here, you gotta get up. And uh, Absalom Jones said to him, well, wait until the prayer is over. And once it's over, we will get up. Well, he decided to, the, the trustee of St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church, to summon another um, usher. And by the time the usher came, uh, prayer was over. And as is documented in, in history books, um, Absalom, jo Absalom Jones, as well as Richard Adams, said, you all don't have to worry about us anymore. We will, we will no longer bother you. And out of that experience uh, would ultimately come uh, what we know today as the African Methodist Episcopal Church. 
the African Methodist Episcopal Church itself uh, started in 1794 um, after its founding, of course, in 1787, where Bethel AME was dedicated and Allen uh, was, was, um, was the pastor. And the AME Church has had a, a very profound impact on, on um, American culture. It's back to um, the, the 1960s, uh, for example, uh, in about 1965, when you have the march uh, in, in, in Selma, and it's out of what, uh, one of the AME churches where a lot of those meetings was held and where the march actually initiated, uh, Brown uh, Chapel uh, AME Church right there in Selma. Um, as we look at any organization, particularly the body of Christ, we look at, well, what, what's the impact? What, how, the, how many lives have been touched? And the AME Church has a rich history as I mentioned before with Bishop Allen, but it's not just Bishop Allen. You got Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, who was responsible for much of the AME Church's growth in the South. Um, also would become a member of the state of Georgia uh, legislature and did a number of other things. You have uh, Bishop uh, Paul Quinn, William Paul Quinn, uh, who would help advance the church, the AME Church westward. Um, you then have Bishop Daniel Alexander Payne, native of South Carolina, who was a major proponent for education in the church, which is one of the, the really the pillars of the church, if you will. Um, and he would really help to advance that, help uh, to buy Wilberforce. Now, of course, you know we have Wilberforce University. Um, we have a seminary, Payne Theological Seminary, in which I'm a proud graduate, that he uh, is named in his honor and he play, made a, played a major role. Uh, in as well. And so um, we have a rich legacy, but it goes beyond just um, sort of the clergy of the church, you know, common day folks. Um, you have uh, Gwen Eiffel, may she rest in peace, of uh, PBS NewsHour. Um, you have, uh, of course, Rosa Parks, may she rest in peace, who played a significant role in the Montgomery boy, um, bus boycott. She was a stewardess in the church, along with being a secretary of the NAACP. Um, we have, if you go to entertainment space, uh, LL Cool J, a member of um, Greater Cathedral Church, uh, Greater Allen Cathedral Church in Queens, uh, uh, New York, and, and so forth and so on. So there have been a number of people. Brian Stevenson of the Equal Justice Initiative actually um, raised an AME church right there uh, in Delaware. And so we've had a significant impact on society. Additional resources will be linked in the description section of this video and I'm going to encourage you to explore those resources and take the Mother Bethel virtual tour in Philadelphia. I'm praying that as you explore his story or her story will not just be history but it becomes our story as well.